Good afternoon, I'm Jeff. I'm a sewer tech northwest. Today we're at 736 Evergreen Road in Lake Oswego, Oregon. Located in the downstairs or the basement area, there's a whole bathroom that's torn apart here and a uh, toilet flange that's exposed underneath this towel. I'm trying to keep the wax off the camera. It's a three inch uh, cast iron pipe here we're going through. I'm going to insert the camera and check the overall condition and serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. Do have water running. Here we go. I've got the sink and tub upstairs running currently. I want to point out that throughout the cast iron here so far uh, on the side walls, there's about an inch of debris buildup in a lot of these spots here, uh, which is not terribly uncommon. This cast iron is rough, very porous and rough, and it catches stuff easily. And uh, if you have a habit of putting grease and things down the line that really shouldn't go there, they will really get stuck in cast iron. So we'll look at that better on the way back out. And here at 46 feet, it transitions here from, you know, I think it's, this is 3 inch cast iron, it might be 4 inch. Uh, the concrete pipe that it's switching over to here almost looks like 4 inch. So we might be in 4 inch cast iron pipe. I don't have a lot to go off of. Uh, as a, there's no pipe exposed down here. So it looks like it's going here from 4 inch cast iron to 4 inch concrete pipe at 46 feet. And here, uh, I just wanted to point this one out, and it's really big and obvious. I've passed a couple other root intrusions on the way out here already, um, but we do have a, a pretty large, significant one here at 84 feet. And it looks like more roots here at about 88 feet. We just popped over there. More roots here at 91 feet. Looks like more roots here again. All right, here at about 107 feet out, the camera is getting extremely hard to push. There's a lot of resistance. Uh, one, because of the, 
uh, very long length of the line and because of the point of access and configuration of the pipe. Unfortunately, this is about as far as I'm going to be able to get. I will locate the camera head here, see where we're at, and then we'll get the line drained out so we have a clear picture of it on the way back. Uh, but right now, the uh, concrete portion of the line is looking in uh, really rough shape, and that's with the water in there. So we'll, uh, we'll have a better look at it on the way out. All right, I was able to pick up a, uh, a signal here. The camera head is beyond where I can get to at this point, uh, but it does head out to the rear of the property, and I was able to pick it up. If you're standing at the back of the house looking at, towards the rear of the property, the line's heading uh, looks like to the rear left corner of the property, and it's just beyond that corner where I, I uh, was able to pick up the signal but not get on top of the camera head. I'll reel back here a few feet and hopefully get on the property. Uh, but because we have the extensive root damage to the line, uh, I've seen some very large root intrusions throughout. Uh, there's a lot of aggregate rock showing through, as you can see here. The pipe is, is wearing out and getting thin. Uh, I do recommend a full replacement of the concrete section of the line, as it is obviously pretty much in tatters at this point, unfortunately. The uh, tree roots really uh, destroy concrete. I'm going to try and locate here, and I'll do markings about every 15 feet or so, uh, just with uh, lines showing the direction the pipe runs, and then I'll try and do a marking at the cast iron transition. And I recommend, uh, as long as the cast iron's in good shape, it looked good on the way out, I do recommend it be jetted to get all the debris out of it, um, but generally the, uh, a repair will start the transition from cast iron to concrete. All right, I tried locating here as well. Uh, the line kind of heads back to this little boxed-in area. There's a fence just behind the garage, and uh, the line's running back there, but there's a there's a huge waste debris uh, can back there that, that weighs a couple hundred pounds. It can't be moved, so I'm going to have to move even closer back towards the house here to hopefully get a first locate. The repair guys are just going to have to track the line uh, to and from this uh furthest out point. And I'll try and do my first marking here at 80 feet. And I'll mark this with a white X to indicate this is the furthest point that I was able to get out to, or at least locate. And uh, obviously I don't know how, how much further the line goes beyond 106 feet, so I would recommend pulling records to see uh, how far the line goes, because uh, that could uh, greatly change how much the line needs to be replaced, obviously, if it goes another 30, 40 feet. Hopefully it's just a couple feet further uh, than where it was at. Okay, I was able to do locates here. We're at three feet deep. We're at the rear left corner of the backyard, right next to this little uh, fence door. You'll see that swinging out, and that's right where the camera head is at currently. When you can see this much aggregate rock showing through, as you can see on the bottom of the, the screen there in the flow line, when you can see large rocks like that, that tells you that the line is wearing very thin and uh, it's quite weak. Okay, I'll do another marking here at 70 feet. I will to do some green lines. So there's a, uh, I'm sorry, a white line. So there's a white X at 80 feet. I'll do lines in between that just to show the direction the pipe runs. And then at the cast iron transition, I will put a white T. And obviously beyond 80 feet, the repair guys are going to have to track that out. All right, here we're about two feet, two inches deep. Roots coming through pretty much throughout this whole concrete section of the line. With the roots, the damage, the uh, and the point of where the line is at right now, it is. Uh, I'd highly recommend getting this line updated. I'll be doing my marking here at 60 feet, and then I'll do my uh, final marking at 46 feet at the cast iron transition. Okay, I did another marking here, and uh, at this point we're about to pass underneath the uh, wood deck out back. Well, markings are going to be on that at this point. 
or my, my final marking will be anyway. But yeah, you can see here where the concrete, I mean, the bottom of the pipe here looks like it's actually broken out. It, the, the pipe is so thin here. So this is one of those lines that uh, just needs to be updated at this point. We've got more roots here. So we do have roots from, from start to finish throughout the concrete. And uh, it almost looks like a piece of the cast iron broke here. I'm not really sure what's going on. Or the concrete eroded out from underneath it. I don't know. Uh, but I'll do a white, uh, white T here, and it will be on the wood deck and back. And it's from this point here at 46 feet, I recommend the uh, repair start. Unless the, the cast iron coming back is in bad shape, uh, but it looked good on the way out. We'll, we'll double check that. Uh, but the uh, concrete portion from this point here all the way to the uh, terminus, I recommend be replaced due to the extensive damage. All right, I actually have marked this here with a, a stick that I've shoved between the deck boards, painted the whole top of it white. And we're at about one feet seven inches deep here. That's including the deck and any space that's beneath it. Uh, there's some spots under that deck where there's a foot or more of a void, so it might be shallower than that. Once you get back to this point right about here, you can start seeing the, uh, the buildup on the sidewalls of the pipe. And in some spots, it's, it's, uh, it's quite thick. There looks like there's about a half inch to an inch of it across here, that first about 20 feet of the line I've scoped. Uh, so I do recommend a hydrojet to blow all of this junk out of the line so the cast iron's cleaned out. I recommend a rescope after that to ensure that the that the debris isn't covering up any issues or anything like that. Uh, but it looks like that even with the debris in there, the cast iron is draining out uh, quite nicely. There's there was only a couple spots with a little tiny standing water, and there was also debris associated with that. So I think once it's cleaned out, this is this cast iron section is going to drain well. Um, but I do recommend a rescope after the jet just to ensure that the the pipe is is in good shape underneath all that debris. And then I obviously recommend a full replacement of the concrete section starting at 46 feet and extending out beyond 106 feet to the terminus. Uh, you have to pull records to find out exactly where the line terminates, uh, but it's likely just beyond uh, where the camera had stopped at the rear of the property. And obviously, uh, whenever a whole line or most of a line is being replaced like this, it's, I think it's a good idea to do a rescope after everything is all said and done just to make sure that the replacement pipe was done properly and drains well. 